Good. Thank you so much for agreeing to talk with me uh, about your experience from my blog, The View from My Window in Palestine. Thanks for you. It's my pleasure. And I'm talking to you from Jerusalem. Where are you sitting right now? Yeah. I'm uh, at my home, Haifa. Wonderful. Welcome. Thanks. Janan, uh, for those who don't know your story, uh, can you tell me what was your life like before May 2010? And what happened then that changed everything? Well, it's uh, the date that uh, Amir was uh, my husband and uh, activist and uh, uh, Palestinian leader uh, from uh, uh, 48, Palestine 48. He was kidnapped from home by uh, General Security Services. For two weeks, we didn't know anything at all what is happening with him. So actually, that day was the, the day that changed our life. Uh, I'm talking all the time uh, about day before the 6th of May and our life after the 6th of May. After that day, we became to be a, a part of the family of Palestinian political prisoners in the Israeli jails, the uh, prisoners uh, uh, for freedom. And when you say kidnapped, what do you mean for people who aren't familiar uh, with the situation in Israel or in Palestine? Why would you use the word kidnapped? I mean, the police came and arrested him, didn't they? Yeah, but the situation wasn't like the regular arresting that we are usual to hear about the about 16 uh, general security services part of them was uh, with the uh, they were uh, um, like uh, police but the most of them was wasn't but there was with the gun came to our home at uh, about three o'clock at the morning while we was sleeping and uh, then uh, our two daughters was, uh, were uh, 12 and uh, 17, and they, they are people uh, and they needed uh, to go in the morning to school. Uh, a huge number of uh, general security services came to our home, uh, not um, at, our, uh, at our door in, in a frightening way. And uh, just when Amir uh, opened the door and we were just, uh, and he came back two hours before from uh, the village of Al Al-Araqib uh, in uh, al naqab uh, which was destroyed uh, by uh, the service, the, uh, uh, the state of Israel, and uh, he was in the country. Uh, of supporting of Al Arafid, and he just came in about yeah, two hours, and they came to our home in this way, uh, trying to uh, threatening us, uh, uh, catch Amir, uh, and didn't allow us even my daughter uh, to to reach him, to hug him, to say anything to him. Uh, they uh, terrified our daughters. They forced them to sit uh, at, the, at the salon, not uh, moving, not uh, going back to, uh, to sleep. And they started searching our home. I asked for um, uh, to see if uh, they have a permission from, uh, from a court. And they, they said that they did, but they didn't agree to give me uh, the order. And uh, they threatened us and uh, used the uh, violence. Uh, and uh, um, after two hours of searching our home while they uh, taking uh, Amir away, and when I asked even, I, I told the, the officer, I don't know you and I don't trust you. Uh, you uh, like a thief for me. How you reached my home, how you uh, entered my home, you are like a thief. I, am, I don't trust you. I don't trust your uh, men, and I asked that Amir, uh, 
please keep Amir until you finish your session, but they didn't agree. They took him, and later I, I knew that uh, they took him to his office, uh, which is Etijah. Uh, Etijah um, uh, is uh, the umbrella of uh, the uh, Arab-Palestinian uh, NGOs in uh, uh, Palestine 48. And uh, during two hours, they didn't allow us to move. Even I wanted uh, to open uh, the, the window, they didn't agree. The phone uh, ran, and uh, then my, uh, my, my mother uh, was uh, at hospital in, in a bad situation, and she passed away, and also my father during the, the, the same month, while Amir was uh, jailed. And I said to the officer, it would be the hospital, my mother is in a bad situation, please let me answer. But his reaction was to take away the phone. And the, all the situation why I said kidnapping, because really it was like kidnapping. We didn't know where they are taking him. Later, uh, at the morning, they called and they said he is in the jail of uh, uh, Petah Tikva. Uh, the city that, uh, the, the Israeli city that uh, uh, historically is uh, a Palestinian city called Mutabbas. Uh, and he is uh, uh, with us for uh, um, uh, uh, confiscation for, uh, 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 you are not allowed to see him. And during uh, two weeks, our uh, uh, the lawyers, the team of the lawyers, which uh, are the part of them, friends of Amir, uh, tried to reach him, tried uh, to visit him, but by uh, an order of the court, they wasn't allowed. And later we knew even that Amir uh, asked the um, asked the, the police to see a lawyer. He said, I have the right to see a lawyer. And they said to him, yes, you have, uh, theoretically, you have a right to see a lawyer, but practically, for now, you are not allowed to see a lawyer. And it was amazing, Laura, uh, to know, I want to, to, to go back to the 6th of May, in the same day, after uh, two hours of searching uh, our home and uh, taking a lot of Things, uh, all of our computers, all of our uh, uh, mobiles, uh, a lot of things from uh, my uh, my uh, bag, uh, which part was for my my work as social worker. Uh, they took uh, they took uh, all, and uh, when in the end they agreed to let me see the order, and I was shocked because the order was uh, signed uh, by a judge two weeks ago, uh, two weeks before uh, the day of uh, the, the jailing, which means that they had uh, a lot of time to come to Amir to arrest him uh, at his office, uh, at the day, uh, not in this way, but they choose it uh, especially to come uh, at the night, uh, terrifying our daughter, terrifying us, and all the circumstances for me was kidnapping. I see. I see. Well, that makes a lot of sense, but uh, I, I apologize. I need to ask yeah. on behalf of the people who are watching, again, who don't know your story, Okay. Um, maybe they would assume that the stories are true, that in fact Amir is guilty of, uh, of, of he was convicted in fact of, of providing mm -hmm. secret information to Hezbollah, is that correct? And Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so people watching might wonder, well, if he's guilty, then, you know, he's guilty and they treated him like he was guilty. Okay. Well, uh, let us uh, and go back two years before. Uh, during, and it's amazing, we are talking today while Israel attacking Gaza. And the story began in, uh, in the same period that uh, Israel attacked in the last time Gaza. 
during that period, Amir was very active by conducting uh, Israel, by uh, writing statements against the attacking, uh, organizing demonstrations, including Haifa, and talking part and speaking uh, against the attacking. In the same day that Amir um, was speaking in one big demonstration in Haifa, which we, uh, we are uh, live, a uh, day after, uh, six uh, policemen came to his office and took him for investigation uh, in the Shabak, which the General Security Services. And they investigated, investigated him for six hours and treated him, and they, they said exactly, this is what he said to me, they said to him, be careful, we are watching you, we are watching your, uh, what you are doing, and next time, when we are reach you and come to you, you can say goodbye for a long time to your family, because you are going to be at jail. And what I am saying, that this is exactly what they did in the 6th of May. This is exactly what they uh, planned. Uh, you, you said actually, uh, uh, Amir uh, um, uh, confused. Yeah, but it was, you, you need uh, to understand the circumstances. First, uh, he was uh, uh, signed, he, he signed uh, a big bargain uh, with, uh, uh, which, which means that uh, the, uh, the court will limit the, the uh, period of the jailing because uh, 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 the court, uh, the, the, um, the law, the uh, team, they were very afraid that Amir could be sent uh, to jail for a uh, lifetime because uh, uh, the accusing was so huge so afraid for uh, I mean, someone that doesn't know Amir and doesn't know the circumstances, they even uh, accused him for helping the enemy during the war. And the war wasn't uh, attempt, uh, uh, wasn't mean uh, during uh, the attacking uh, uh, in uh, 12 uh, sex, but it means that Israel in a situation of continuous war with the Arab world, so every uh, touch with the Arab world could be uh, um, or be, uh, could be uh, um, me like he, uh, he gave an um, um, an information. So uh, we know from uh, the team of uh, the lawyers that during the uh, two weeks that Amir uh, was. Uh, in the investigation of the General Security Services, uh, Amir uh, was tortured. Uh, he was hit for 72 hours. And try to imagine someone uh, that doesn't uh, get sleep. Uh, they didn't allow him to sleep for 72 hours, and they admitted that in the court. And uh, while he's... Uh, uh, tied uh, to a small chair, and uh, all the time, uh, and this kind of torturing, uh, uh, stretching his uh, his body, uh, putting a light in his uh, uh, in front of his face. So, uh, 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 this period, uh, uh, they get a, a confession for, for uh, from him, and even we was afraid that uh, we we thought that Amir could be drugged in that period because Amir also told the the lawyer that he smelled from the uh, from uh, the window of the air condition he smelled some uh, uh, strange uh, smells. Uh, um, and uh, it could be, it could be that Amir was drunk. And, and when Amir felt bad, he felt something wrong with his body and asked for a blood test from the doctor. The doctor uh, and the court even didn't allow that. And the question that we kept asking, 
why they didn't allow him uh, to do to do the blood test because you know if you are drugged in in, uh, in a period of uh, some time some hours it could be fine uh, uh, that you uh, you was drugged but if the the time is passing you will never know so uh, there was a lot of questions and we know also Nora from the lawyers and from the military courts that when you are as a Palestinian accused in what so called what Israel is calling uh, security uh, um, accusing you will never be free and the question was is to uh, to make a deal like like you are making a deal with the enemy it's not that the court is not our friend and even they are not treating us as an equal citizen like they did with the with the Jewish that was accused in security uh, accusing uh, by the way in, just in the same period that Amir was accused in security um, um, in security accusing uh, another uh, woman, a soldier, an Israeli soldier, uh, Anat Kam, was accused uh, in kidnapping thousands of uh, reports from uh, the military, and they dealt with her in a different, really way. She kept at home. She came to the to the court uh, by her own self. Uh, and later uh, she she was uh, uh, jailed yeah, and she was sentenced for uh, uh, four and a half a year. Why in the same period you can see that Amir wasn't allowed to see a lawyer. Uh, Amir, uh, there was a gag order in uh, the whole uh, case. Uh, Amir was... Uh, when he was, uh, uh, when they uh, bring bring him to the court, uh, he was uh, brought with uh, a handcuff and uh, by his legs and uh, uh, and arms. Uh, so you can theoretically see, uh, and in fact, yeah, theoretically, like there is one court system in Israel, but in practice, you can see. In, in so uh, obvious that there is a two system, one for judging of the Palestinians and the other for judging the, the, the Jewish. So uh, each one is uh, accused a Palestinian in the Israeli court. It could be that he will be sent for uh, a life sentence. And another another thing that was interesting in this um, in this court, that Amir was accused and uh, the persecution uh, used what's so called secret evidence, which means that the persecution uh, brings um, what they are uh, saying as uh, um, a secret evidence, but uh, and let the, the, ju the judges know what it is, and not the, the not Amir and not the even the lawyer could know what is this. So uh, all you, you know, Yanni, we deal with the court in all, all the uh, all the uh, uh, period and in uh, it, 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 for, yani for us the court is not a real judge court. It's like you are making some business with uh, even an enemy because they treat us like an inner enemy. So yani, the deal was to make the harm uh, as yani, as most as less, not not uh, to have uh, not to have Amir because this is what uh, yani, uh, actually this is what they need. They needed to. So, to be sure that Amir will be sent to jail for a long time as possible as they can. And we will not agree, we will not agree that Amir will be sent for a sentence life. And our community 
know exactly what it means when you confess as a Palestinian leader or activist and uh, make a deal with, uh, with the, the Israeli government and the court. It doesn't mean really that you are, uh, that you did what you have done, but it means that to, to make the harm lesser as possible as you can and to be freed and uh, to come back to, to your community and uh, be active uh, as possible as you, know, you, you need to, uh, to be. I, I understand what you're saying, I, I think. Um, I understand that you're saying that in the context of the way Israel perceives its continuing conflict with the Arab world, that any contact with Arabs, especially by a Palestinian citizen of Israel, is seen as uh, uh, treasonous or subversive or at least suspicious. And yeah. so... Um, the interaction that Amir had and you had mm -hmm. with the uh, Israeli security services was not a one-night event. It was over a long yeah. period of time where they were uh, trying to undermine and stop his political activism um, and that uh, this arrest was uh, not done with due process even in, within the Israeli uh, legal uh, context. And so, therefore, the plea, plea bargain that he made uh, was not a confession of guilt as much as it was a, uh, you know, a, a deal to reduce yeah. the amount of harm that they would be able to cause uh, to him and to the family uh, uh, in the way that they did. Am, am I right about that? Yeah, yeah, sure. And the, another thing that even the persecution admitted that they... Uh, uh, listen to, to our uh, all our communi uh, communication uh, possibilities, the mobile, Skype, internet, email uh, of Amir and us, and they uh, listened uh, uh, more than three three not thousand even a lot of uh, calls, and they didn't find any evidence. Uh, against Amir. So uh, actually they did have nothing against Amir uh, uh, except what they called the secret, the secret evidence. So uh, it, it was a deal. It wasn't uh, a confession as uh, yani people could, uh, could know. And you know, Noura, yani, the problem for us, the Palestinians uh, inside Israel, Palestinians of 48, that uh, it's, it's a problematic. For us, uh, the Arab world is our continuity, is the, is the, the regular uh, continuity as Arabs. But uh, for Israel, the, the Arab world is the enemy. For us, it's, uh, the Arab world is not the enemy. So you can figure that any touch with any uh, people in the Arab world could be accused as a threatening, or could be you could be accused as you are in contact with the enemy. Today, uh, people uh, use the Skype, use the Facebook, and they could contact people from the Arab world, and uh, the state could uh, accuse them that you are passing uh, information to the enemy. So it's a problematic, and if, if you know Amir, Amir was, the, as the director of Etuja, he took part uh, in a lot of conferences, he is part of a lot of uh, uh, um, sec secretaries of uh, a lot of organization, international organization, and he won't even, uh, ideologically, he won't ask people what is your uh, political uh, point of view when we meet people in conferences? It's uh, it's uh, usual to speak to people, so they they, they could accuse uh, Amir or any one of us that you are that you are contacting the enemy. So it's it's a really a complicated situation for the Palestinians here. It is, it is, and I and I do know Amir. And I consider him a colleague and a friend and a, uh, a model and a hero. And uh, that's why I'm so glad that you're sharing this part of his story so more people can 
uh, understand the difficulty for Palestinians inside Israel and for Palestinians in general who are trying to yeah. do community service and community activism and trying to seek uh, peace with justice um, in, a, in a situation where, um, where it's not uh, allowed and the consequences are great um, for him and for you. And um, I want to go on to a different set of questions, but before I do, just to let folks know, uh, uh, Amir was sentenced uh, ultimately to nine years, am I correct? Yeah, to so nine years in uh, in jail and for uh, I don't know how to to say it in Arabic it's which means for another two years after uh, he released if he accused for anything that uh, could be a security so he uh, will uh, yani sent back to jail for another year. So it's actually nine years with two another uh, limited uh, years. And he's already completed two of those nine years? Uh, two and a half, about, yeah. Okay. And where can people get uh, more information about Amir's case, if they're interested? Well, uh, there is a blog. Uh, it's called uh, um, Free Amir Makhul. It's a blog, uh, blog spot. Uh, there is a, a pages uh, Amir Makhoul and Free Amir Makhoul at uh, there is a, a Twitter at uh, Facebook and uh, you can find there uh, all the information that you need and there is also some blogs what was uh, established by like a Damir uh, institution they have also a blog in their uh, um, page that includes uh, all the information uh, about uh, the case, the uh, sentencing. There is a lot of uh, um, uh, at YouTube you can find videos. Uh, we have uh, already put uh, all uh, the information what uh, what we have because actually what we are trying, what I'm trying to do uh, is to keep people know what is happening for Palestinians and especially Palestinians from inside Israel, the Palestinians of 48. Because uh, I do believe that all what we are uh, passing and what we are uh, living as uh, Palestinians uh, in the individual level, it affects uh, all the time in the collective level. Uh, yeah. Today, all what I am doing and uh, what I am uh, uh, as, a, as a family of Palestinian prisoners, it actually affects the, uh, the collective level. Yeah. I mean, what we are passing, what we are uh, uh, facing with the, with the jail uh, services and the, the state, it's not an individual story. It is uh, it, it is a symbolic, like uh, it is the the Palestinian uh, issue and the Palestinian case. So it's so important uh, to keep uh, the, the international community updated and informed in what is happening for us. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, thank you so so much for sharing um, this part of your story.